welcome to Cafe Church this morning. Um, yeah, welcome to your own home, to your sofa. I hope you are comfortable. I hope you have found the essentials that you require for this morning's Cafe Church. I have mine here. I have coffee in my favourite mug. I have biscuits because it's Cafe Church. I have fruit for if I decide I'm, I'm feeling quite healthy and some paper and some scissors. Um, what we are making this morning is we're going to prepare for um, Palm Sunday by making some palm leaves. Um, it's a good old cutting activity. Um, you just need to take a piece of paper, you could use the inside of a cereal box or a bit of newspaper or a flyer or a takeaway menu because they're all shut at the minute anyway and just fold it in half down the long way so we've got a nice crease okay so it's a tent fold there we go and then ta-da we are gonna draw half of our palm leaf so along the bit that is folded so we're going to draw a bit of the stalk come all the way down and back up here again so that then we can cut it out with your scissors okay so taking care not to cut through the fold just cut it round like this ta-da Okay, now fold it back up. I need you to put some lines on it. Now I've done them a little bit diagonally and I have left a gap at the top where the fold is to try and encourage me not to cut it in half as I cut along the lines. So then we're just going to cut up the lines to make the palm fronds do we call them fronds I think we do anyway I'm gonna cut up there and while you are doing this I would like you to think about discuss if you've got other people in your house or just messages on the comments below or on the Facebook chat um, have you ever met anybody famous uh, have you ever been to an opening of a supermarket where there was someone famous come in? Or have you seen someone famous where you've, you've gone and queued up and waited a long time for something signing? Um, and just sort of have that discussion. And then you will have your palm leaves ready for our prayer activity later on in the morning. And don't forget to top your coffee up. Abundance flow. 
Today's reading is from Matthew 21, verses 1 to 11. Jesus' triumphant entry. As Jesus and the disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to the town of Bethage and the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of them on ahead. Go into the village over there, he said. As soon as you enter, you will see a donkey tied to there with its coat beside it. Untie them and bring it to me. If anyone asks what you are doing, just say the Lord needs them and he will let you take them. This took place to fulfill the prophecy that said, Tell people of Jerusalem, look, the king is coming to you. He is humble, riding on a donkey. Riding on a donkey's coat. The two disciples did as Jesus commanded. They brought the donkey and the colt to him, and threw their garments over the colt, and he sat on it. Most of the crowd spread their garments on the road ahead of them, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Jesus was in the centre of the procession, and the people all around him were shouting, Praise God the Son of David! Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Praise God in the highest heaven! The entire city of Jerusalem was in uproar as he said, Who is this? they asked, and the crowds replied, it's Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth. Good morning, or afternoon, or evening, or whenever you happen to be watching this. Um, I have to say it feels a little strange, to be honest, just sitting here talking to myself. So I hope there's somebody out there listening. Uh, and I would also like to say that it's nice to be back at St Cuthbert's in, in some capacity, even if I can't see you. Um, I've kind of missed not being there. And I'd also like to thank Sally and John, uh, Bev, Holly, Sam and everybody else. Well, I know I've been doing a fantastic job. Um, so perhaps I'll be able to take more holidays now from, from here on in. Now, normally at this point in the cafe church, um, We'd be getting up, getting a refill, getting a bit of cake, getting a biscuit, and then just sitting down around the tables to discuss the questions that we would have been given. And obviously it's difficult to do that in, the, in this environment, but we're going to share those with you later on. So perhaps if you have time during the day over lunch, um, you'll be able to maybe talk about those within your own families. But today's Palm Sunday, um, so before we get to those questions, I just thought it might be worth looking at the events of Palm Sunday a bit more closely. So we're familiar with, with the story. Jesus enters Jerusalem riding on a donkey. We hear this story every year, we get given our palm crosses. I understand that uh, some of you may have got palm crosses in your packs that were sent out. If so, brilliant. Um, if not, then you've got your palm branches to, to wave, which I believe you've made with Natalie earlier on. So normally we would sing our songs of worship, we'd wave our paper leaves as we reenact the story. But sometimes I wonder whether we just kind of gloss over some of the other things when we just concentrate on the things we're familiar with. So, and I'm going to be brief, you'll be glad to know that. I'd just like to touch on three things I got out of this when I was looking at this passage earlier this week when deciding what we were going to do for Cafe Church. So number one, when we hear this story and we think of Jesus riding into Jerusalem, we think of the people shouting praise as he enters in this grand procession. But when we actually look at the story, when we look at what Matthew says, 
he tells us that Jesus sent two of his disciples. He said to them, go to the village ahead of you. There you'll find a donkey with her colt. Untie them and bring them to me. This took place to fulfil what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, on the foal of a donkey. Mark in his sorrows, sorry, Mark in his gospel, narrows this down a little bit. He leaves the donkey out altogether. Jesus said, Go into the village ahead of you. And immediately as you enter it, you'll find a colt tied there, one that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus. They threw their cloaks on it and he sat on it. So there's this possibility that Jesus didn't come into Jerusalem riding on a donkey, but rather a colt, a young donkey. Now having thought about this, I just wonder what that might look like. So to help, I printed off this picture. I hope you can see this. So this is a donkey with its colt. Just look at the size of that. So a colt apparently doesn't really get to be much more than four foot tall. Now Jesus, whilst we know he wasn't the blonde haired, blue eyed six footer that he's often portrayed as, would have been maybe what, five and a half foot if he was average height for a man of his time. So we've got this image now of a grown man riding on a baby donkey. I have to think that would look pretty ridiculous. We have a man riding into Jerusalem as a king, but making himself look a little silly at the same time. I was trying to think what the modern day equivalent would have been, and then I came across this picture. It'd be like me starting a parade whilst riding this. Let's stick that one there. Now this comes to our, our second point. And although we've realised that it would have been a strange sight, Jesus and his disciples entering on the, the donkey or the colt, the people still praised, accepted and worshipped him as he entered the city. They did this in two ways. Firstly, they spread their cloaks on the road and then they waved palm branches in celebration. Now laying down cloaks was an act of reverence, it was an act of respect that was normally reserved only for royalty. And palm branches were often used in victory celebrations. Both of these acts symbolised Jesus coming as a king. <coughs> Excuse me. And secondly, they shouted out in praise. They shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Now this comes with a warning. This is the uh, academic bit. I've been doing research. So you can count this as homeschooling if you want. Now the word Hosanna is a translation from the Greek, but originally comes from the Hebrew. And I may not pronounce this right, so don't take this as gospel. Uh, the Hebrew Hoshina Na which means savers. So the act of crying out Hosanna was a cry to God for help, a cry for a saviour and to be rescued. So as Jesus entered Jerusalem in this act of humility, he's still recognised as king and saviour. Now I said I was going to keep this short, so I'll try and do that. So finally, there's something that isn't actually mentioned in the scripture but when I do my research, I thought it might help us understand Jesus' entry a bit better. Both Matthew and Mark are clear about the direction Jesus enters Jerusalem from and where he enters the city. He comes from the east, coming from Bethpage at the beginning of Passover week. What they don't tell us is that at the same time, at the opposite side of the city, Pilate would have been entering, riding on a horse, flanked by the might of the Roman Empire. Pilate didn't live in Jerusalem, spent most of his time in Caesarea Maritime, which was a city on the west coast. 
However, during large religious festivals, when the population of Jerusalem could more than double, he would come along with large numbers of Roman soldiers to remind the people who was in charge, to quell any thoughts of rebellion and try and keep the peace. His procession would have included armoured foot soldiers, cavalrymen on horseback, lots of gleaming armour, polished leather, and flying above all of this, the imperial standard, the gold eagle. They too would have entered the city at the beginning of the Passover week. So on one side of the city, we'd have had a display of great military might, a show of power and prestige, a display of economic and political authority. To the west we saw the Emperor's representative come riding on a horse, surrounded by the military. On the other side, we see God's representative come riding on a colt, surrounded by a ragbag tang of outcasts. So on one side enters the kingdom of the world, on the other the kingdom of God. The kingdom of the world enters with arrogance and might to protect itself. God's kingdom enters with humility and peace. Now, if you want something to, to take away, the questions that uh, we would have had out if we were at Cafe Church as normal and discussing these, that maybe you can think about on your own or discuss with whoever you have, maybe over lunch or as you sat round this afternoon. Number one, how would we celebrate a person of high honour coming to Bradford today? Number two, Someone loaned his donkey to Jesus. How willing would you be to obey Jesus, even if he asked you to do something you didn't understand? And finally, number three, how do you, or how should we, show Jesus that you love and honour him? Mark will now lead us in a time of prayer. In a time of quiet this morning, during Palm Sunday, we thought it would be a really good idea to pray for people we know who are not able to praise God at the moment. So what we'd like you to do is take the palm leaf that hopefully you made earlier and on each of the leaves write a name. This could be anybody's name but I what I'd really like us to do this morning is to take some time to think about people perhaps who are not yet Christian, that don't yet know the love of Jesus in their hearts. And just take some time to pray for those people. It doesn't just have to be people that don't know God yet, but it could also be people that are struggling at the moment, either with their faith, or with loneliness and with isolation. If we take a moment to do that now, and then I'll bring us back together in about a minute or so, and we'll pray over the people uh, that you've had time to think about and write on your life, Lee. Hi, and I hope everybody's been able to do that now, um, or at least had time to think about people you might want to pray for mm. this morning. Um, I'm just going to um, say a short prayer over the lives of all those people, um, and um, then if you could join with me by saying Amen at the end. Lord, thank you for the technology that we're still able to come together with you this morning, and we can still worship as a church family, even through a different medium. Lord, I just pray that everyone 
within the church community is safe and well. And um, particularly, Lord, um, I'd just like to pray for those that are struggling with isolation, with being on their own. I pray that they reach out, that they talk to people and that they try and embrace the community of church. Lord, I pray for all the people that we wrote on the uh, palm leaves or that we thought about this morning. You know where each of those people are in their lives. Lord, I pray for your love and blessing to come into their lives. That they will come to know you or at least feel your presence during this, this time of isolation. Lord, we also at this time really want to pray for the NHS, for those key workers, for all those people out on the front line um, dealing with this um, pandemic crisis face on. I just pray that they can stay safe, that they get the equipment that they need and that they will feel protected and welcomed and supported by all of the people of this nation. Through him who lives with you and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Right, just want to say thank you for joining us this morning. Um, I'm going to try and get more resources up here on the, on the, the YouTube channel or on Facebook to just help us help us continue to worship as best we can in these difficult times. Um, so you might want to to join us on Good Friday. We're going to have a tenebrae service that will be available in the evening for you to, to join in with. Um, and hopefully, maybe see you back here next Sunday um, when we'll have some, some other act of worship for you to to join with. So until then, take care, stay safe, stay healthy, and perhaps we can just join in together with the grace. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, wherever we are, for now and forever. Amen. Cafe Church has ended. Uh, go and get yourself a refill and enjoy the rest of the day. <laughs>